Okay then, well I'm back in the studio after my trip to Finchingfield camping site um, and um, looking forward to um, using sketches and uh, images that I've worked up to actually produce another lavender field. Um, just quickly run through the colours, there's my selection of uh, brushes uh, all laid out, got my water, I've freshened the colours up with a, um, usually use a flat brush just to damp them off because they have gone hard overnight. Um, that's my burnt sienna, that's my raw sienna, cadmium yellow, Prussian blue, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, now that is lemon yellow, Payne's grey, olizarin crimson, Indian red, burnt umber, light red, and cadmium lemon. Those are the colours, really, that I use. That's cadmium red, by the way, um, which I occasionally use. OK, let's swing round, and that is the drawing that I now have on my board. So I'm going to um, mix the colours up and show you how to paint this. OK, well, the first thing I'm going to do is to damp the top of the paper with a large mop brush. Really damp that top of that paper. There we go. And you can probably see the bead of water. That And also that is, because I've cleaned my brush, uh, all the uh, paints up, then you've got a slight uh, discoloration of the water, which actually helps quite a bit to, for you to see where, um, where the blobs of water hang. And you can then work to that. Right, now it's a blue sky. But the sunlight is coming from the right. So I'm putting in some cadmium yellow on the right. And to that, I'm adding a little light red, just to give that a little bit of light. Now, as we go into the dry paper, the paint tends to hang a little. And then I'm adding more light red as I come down to the lower part of the sky and I'm just picking around the building I'm going to maintain the building white paper it's a lovely old cottage the edge of this lavender field there we are now what I'm going to do I'm now going to use ultramarine blue this side boards a bit of an angle hopefully the ultramarine will not tend to um, to granulate, which at an angle it normally doesn't. Now I'm going to use cobalt blue. And I'm drawing that in very gently into that sunlit side. There we go. Mop a bit of that away. That's lovely. There we are. Then as I come down, I'm adding more cobalt blue and drawing that up notice the angle that I'm painting in vital that you get the feel of sun rays coming across this lovely lavender field then as we head to the lower area I'm going to put in quite a strong area of olizarin and pull that up and pull that right the way down to the horizon or, well, actually, it's not the horizon, it's the edge of the lavender field. Um, just along the bottom edge there. There we are. And I'm going to add a little bit of that, like that sort of rather grey colour there. Then all I'm going to do now is just pick up a little of the paint that's laying along the edge with a damp brush, not a wet brush. Making sure that the brush is dry, or a little dry again, before you pick up some more. And that way, you end up with quite a nice sort of feeling of a light uh, summery sky. Now, to that, while that's still damp, I'm going to go in with some cobalt blue. And I'm going to put some cobalt blue there. 
another patch there, a bit stronger, perhaps there, and just allow that to run in. And that's going to form what I'd class as my fair weather clouds. You know, the, the, the wispy stuff that, um, that hangs in the sky uh, this time of year. And while it's still damp, you can work it. Once it goes dry, then unfortunately you have lost it forever. And one or two little smaller wispy clouds there. There we are. And then a little trick to pick up the light part of the clouds at the top. Completely dry the brush and just gently tease away. And that's lifting off colour. Damp, uh, uh, dry the brush again and you lift off varying shapes to give the illusion of tops of clouds. Now, to be a little careful with this but uh, generally it uh, works quite well. Oh, I think that's probably it really. And then we allow that to completely dry. And while that is in the drying process, let's just lift a little bit of that off so we can have a, another little cloud coming across there. Always a good um, thing to do. And if you want them really white, you just dab off with a tissue. Nice to have a couple of really white areas within your clouds, like that. And that more or less does it. Now we need to allow that to completely dry. Just lifting off additional colour that's ran down into the lower part of the sky. And we just sit back, have a cup of coffee, whatever you're going to do, and allow that to dry. Now the lavender this time of year is just beginning to sort of, sort of turn a little darker. So it's not quite as blue, it's very much more purpley, um, a little bit more purpley tin, tinge, uh, tint comes through. Um, so that's um, the way I'm going to depict it. So for this one I'm going to use cobalt blue with alizarin, but of course the alizarin will need to dominate. Well, not too much, but just to give it a slightly purpley tint to it. Right, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to paint the lavender to start. Okay, I'm going to take a small brush and just drop in a little green and that will be cadmium yellow with cobalt blue. Because I want some, some of that darker green to mingle, not with the distance, because we won't see any um, greens in the distance. So let me show you what I mean. Right, so the first thing we do is to paint the dome top of that. See how it's slightly on the purpley side? And you've got to remember that it, it's in a dome shape. And so I'm painting the contour, the way it actually lays. See the way I'm painting that? And I'm leave, it obviously widens up as it comes through. And then I'm dropping in some little touches of green here and there. Because that will be seen through the, um, through the flower heads. Okay, then we do that one. It's the same sort of process. Tapering. Notice the taper on that. Notice how... You know how it sort of tapers considerably. You've got to remember this is the lighter area, and of course we can see some little touches of green here too, particularly along this edge because we can see the side of that. So you know, just one or two little touches here and there, um, but basically it's still that lavender feel. There you go. Right now I'm going to remix again. Uh, some of you may wish to, um, to have the same sort of 
colour already mixed, but I tend not to mind uh, if it changes slightly. It just adds a bit of interest, I suppose you could say. And this then just stands up, this one, as it runs away out of picture there. A bit more blue, a bit more red. And just pick up the way those lavenders stand up. There you go. And all you do then is just stroke in a little touch of green. Just to give a hint that there are is green there. Now the next one to the left. Blue and alizarin crimson. Give us that nice sort of purpley uh, colour and that more or less meets with that it does go down on a bit of a rise there so there we go look at that just stroke that in look how that how that blends lovely adding a little bit of green to that a little bit of green in that so it's nice to see a little bit of the green coming through this is quite a thick area of uh, of lavender. Notice how I'm putting it in quite rough. I'm not trying to uh, put it on any um, detail at all. Now, all you do, although now we've worked to the outer edges, we can't see the gaps in between. Okay, so particularly here. Right, so that almost blends there. But you can just begin to see a little bit of the greenery there. Very little. Mainly the, the way the lavender stands up. And then, of course, it all tends to, to blend into just a band of colour. Albeit, you know, we've got to also maintain sort of like a feeling of angle. There we go. Run that right out of picture nicely. That's good. And of course, we will there again see a little bit of the green standing up within that as that goes away into the distance. There we go. And just finish off this side now. Cobalt blue, alizarin, water, just to um, bring that back. And there we go. That one lays there. And we don't really see much of a gap between them until we get right to there. We'll put the green on the um, on the land um, very shortly. And then, finally, we just begin to paint through at this sort of angle. And all of a sudden, our lavender field begins to pick up a form of a lavender colour. It's not the really dark at this moment. We'll, we'll, we'll do that very, very shortly. Good. So that's the lavender fill put in with a little bit of greenery in between. Good. Now I'm looking to paint um, trees that are actually behind the building and any trees that run in line with the building. So these will be more or less of a bluer tint. And what I'm also going to do is just lightly damp the paper there. Then I'm going to go cobalt blue, raw sienna, to pick up a nice blue green and just touch up into that damp area. And all of a sudden, you get a nice soft top to not all of those that planting, but to some of it. And it cuts in down the side of the building there. Um, that's the window area there. Then as I head down towards the lower area, just add more blue, more yellow. Just make a denser mix really. It's always to be always nice to be a little dark around the lower area. And just show up the corner of that roof too. I don't want to get too fussy with this, but it is in the distance, so uh, and there is a bit of a hedge there, so we may as well leave that unpainted. And while it's still damp, just bring that through 
around away. So that's the distant trees. They don't look that distant, but they will do when um, when you come to paint in the um, just tend to that roof a little bit there. Um, when you come to paint in the um, bit more to that roof, a little bit of standing out there. Sorry, when you come to paint in the trees that sit on top. Now also, we're going to soften some areas of the tree that stands behind, there and there, because this is going to frame the picture, the, the building really. And for that, I'm going to use ultramarine, but I'm going to use cadmium yellow this time. But they're again, albeit in a bluer, not too intense green, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to touch up into that. Let's just add a bit more yellow to that. Don't want this to be a too distant green. And of course, I'm going to paint around the chimney because that will be, and just one or two little edges there. Just bring it up into that, just soften the top of that chimney pot. And it's not a large chimney. Uh, left hand side is in shadow, sun coming from the right, so it's always a good thing to um, sort of always bear in mind that um, you, you, you're pretty clear on where the light actually is coming from. Um, always a good thing to do because if you're not, just bring that chimney pot smaller down. I'll open that up again in a minute. Um, if you're not clear, then unfortunately um, you could tend to lose a bit of the, the feeling of light when you come to paint the rest of the picture. There we are, and to the left of that, I'm going to add a little bit more cobalt because it's slightly darker and on the lower part. A bit more cobalt and a touch of raw this time to really give it a bit of depth. Raw sienna, that is. So we've got sunlight on the left. Like that. Just round the chimney too. Let that run in around the chimney. And just shows where the light is coming from the right hand side really. Light's coming that size, we've got tops of the tree, um, fairly dark, uh, fairly light, soft because I damped the paper. Right, so that's mainly that. Now there's quite a large tree, there's nothing behind that there. There is a couple of sort of distant trees that I'm going to paint in quite cool and cold sort of um, um green and they are more or less be behind an area there you, you can't really see much of them but um, I'm going to bang them in anyway I've gone down a little low there so quite simply all you do in my exuberance I just so all you do is get a bit of kitchen towel and just lift away there we go so that's solved that problem and that's going to finish there we do have trees on top of that, or uh, in in uh, in front of that, and then just soften it again. Really, you know, just soften it. Try not to remove the underpainting. That is vital that you don't remove the underpainting. Good. So that's pretty much that. Now we come to the trees that are actually sitting in front of or, or level with the building, and they are. A large tree there, and that's the one we sat under when it was um, so hot. Yes, um, uh, when we visited the um, the site, um, and that is going to be, funny enough, my darkest tree. And to get that, I'm going to use Prussian blue or Windsor blue, whichever you prefer, and a little. burnt sienna. Now to start with I'm putting a little bit of um, um, 
cadmium yellow in okay but overall this has going to have going to have a bit more texture to it so I'm scratching across the paper very quickly leaving one or two gaps here and there because there are gaps at the top of this tree but overall it's a very very sort of dark tree as I say it will be the darkest tree of the complete of my set of trees along that back edge good now that's coming down it overlaps the end of that building so bring that out over that building. there is a bit of roof work there um, now I'm going to add more burnt sienna more of the Prussian or um, Windsor Blue, if that's the one, you know, a lot of people like Windsor Blue. And it gets extremely dark in this bottom area. And that is the dark that will show up the field. There we are. And that dark actually overlaps there as well. Good. And it just shows the contour, a little of the contour of those lavenders as they go beyond the distance see that the way it actually helps to um to pick up the contour of that lavender field field in the distance and a bit of burnt sienna now neat well not neat but just in that lower area see that is the probably the darkest tree of the lot uh, because i wanted that next to the cottage the cottage is the important part of this picture is it is about the lavender field, of course, but I do feel that the cottage is a good part of this um, of this picture. Okay, now I'm going to use a bluey green, not dissimilar to that, but a little lighter for this lovely. Um, it's sort of like a fir tree, really. I don't want to get fussy with this. Let's bring in the trunk first, and then we can bring up. And it's a quite an open, one of these open firs that um, tend to, um, are quite heavy in the lower part. It's not a one of those that you can see there like that. There we go. So that's that one. Now I'm going to add a lot more cadmium yellow. Now for this one, this next one here. And that is... There again, quite a quite a nice looking tree. Like that. Um, just want to elaborate on the size of that because I don't want it to be too want it to be fairly um, fairly big. Um, like that. It looks a bit of a conifer affair, but not too worried about depicting that too greatly. And they will be quite dark in the lower area. There again, just helping to shape up the humps of the of the lavender field. You don't see a great deal there. It almost blends in, um, but you can just show a little bit. And then as it goes out of picture... We don't want these to take too much interest um, purely because, um, you know, the eye wants to be drawn to the cottage up the lavender field and not to the, um, the distant trees, really. But they are quite a big part of this subject. Um, right. And then all we do, cadmium yellow, making this one a brown, a bit more brown, a bit more burnt sienna in this. Um, for no reason other than to ring the changes. Um, and this goes in over the top of that there and we just show a little bit of the top of the lavender field there and it's a series of trees that are more or less joined together and what I do sometimes use a damp brush 
and just soften them before they dry, the tops of them. Like that. Just gives a mystical feel to them. A bit more cadmium now. In that lower area, a bit more up there. And then, I'm going to put a dark tree right on the end. It's going to be a bit dark brown. Shall we try a dark brown? See how we get on with that. And that can come into the lower area as well. And just a different sort of strata of tree. We can put some um, uh, branches within that shortly. Then as you come down you get darker of course. And we need to show the top of the lavender field. Which is also important that we get that nicely shown along that edge. There you go. Look at that. So we begin to get a backdrop. It's what I call a backdrop for the lavender field. Now I'm going in with a bit of really dark stuff now. Burnt umber with a touch of Prussian or Windsor. Um, because I need to pick up some little dark edges along this bottom. There's sort of like a hedge, or give an impression anyway, and just on the outside edge there. There, like that. There we go. So that, that gives an added depth to that. Um, just bring that down. There we go. I'm trying to paint really with the camera in front of me, which is... Um, Quite an interesting thing to do. Um, if you've never done it before, um, try it. <laughs> right, now I'm putting in some dark trees here again. There again, they're going to be quite dark against the light sky. And these are conifers. And they've got to go in a bit open. It's going to be dark against that light sky. Um, a bit thicker, these, in the centre. But quite open on the outside edge, so... Basically, um, he's just fiddling around, really, trying to pick up a bit of shape. They go quite wide at the base. Uh, quite a wide affair at the base. Um, and what I'm going to do, not a bad they seem to be sinking nicely into that distance. So, yeah, let's, let's put it into the distance, shall we? Uh, just bring it right the way down. It sits in the grounds of the lovely old thatch cottage thatch and tile roof this is um, and then we've got another conifer here that is well not much different but if I shape the brush different in a different shape then hopefully I'll try and pick up a sense of a different type of conifer there we are just pull across the paper nice and dense in the center pulling across the paper and that just gives us a sort of different feel to that that conifer there as we come down into the lower area just lose it really and then on the outside edge just a simple handling of a darker tree holding in that left hand side and then I don't know perhaps I'll leave that hard edge I was going to soften that but, um, but let's just leave that like that. I think that uh, probably does that really for the background uh, tree work. Okay, well the next job is to get a nice mix of fairly light green for the actual gap between the, um, the lavenders. Now or the lavender beds, um, but it'll be fairly light, so I'm using plenty of um, water. Okay, so that's what you do, use plenty of water. I'm using uh, the Windsor Blue, the Cadmium Yellow, uh, with a touch of Burnt Sienna, that one there. And I'm going to lay that on to the areas in between each row of lavenders that camera just positioned right so you can see what's happening and um, 
let's just start off there there we go yeah that looks about the green I'm looking for slightly bluey green to start with and the board's a bit of an angle so that'll come down nicely see that bead of water hanging just what I want because I'm going to do that one as far down as the same level and then a little bit there as far down as the same level now as that lays there that bead of white or bead of water sorry that's now waiting for me to add a touch of different color put a little bit there because it's at the same sort of angle you may just see a couple of little bits there there we go now as I come forward I'm adding more cadmium and more water and that will give me a slightly richer green not quite so much blue pull that forward pull that forward and pull that forward like that notice I'm painting across the paper and I'm not drawing it towards me uh, there's a reason for that and that's because that's exactly how the land actually lays a bit more water bit more yellow cadmium and that keeps giving a more richer green as I come forward you've got to remember the greens would appear brighter and richer in the foreground now in reality they were slightly on the um, on the sort of yellowy not yellowy uh, slightly browny side Let's enter that up into a set um, but if you do that, unfortunately, you end up with um, with a colour that is not quite uh, it's a bit brown. A bit I prefer to have a bit more yellow in the green as we come into the foreground. And also, I'll show you also my little tip for four foreground greens. Notice how I'm pulling that all forward at the same level, so that the level of the colour changes as you go up then as I come forward even more water more yellow nice bit of yellowy green in this foreground nice bit there nice bit there paint across well that way if if you get an, a, a change of color it runs across the paper you know which is the way the, la the land actually lays um, even more yellow now there 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 more yellow there more yellow there let's run that out of picture now because that's more or less finished so is that one and then as i pull that down into the foreground like that i'm going because you can quite often see a bit of earth in these foregrounds i'm going to stroke in some burnt sienna just pick up a bit of burnt sienna off the palette, stroke that in. There we are. Just to just to ring, you know, just to make it look a little little interesting really. Yep, that's good. Bit bit of earthy feel to the to the green. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Well is one. My favourite little tip trick for foreground greens just to help show that real glow in that foreground green. Good, so that's the way you treat that. Um, while I have a green, I'm actually going to paint in it's a little area there of, of uh, hedging that I'm going to put in, um, and that's going to be uh, this sort of colour. Uh, at least the top of it will be it's lighter than notice how I put that in lighter than the background so you know you, I can put a little bit of shadow underneath later on so that's just a stroke of color like that good now while that's all dry I'm going to look at painting the, um, the cottage now the first thing I'm going to do is to paint the roof of the cottage um, and that is the red tile roof um, so the red tile roof light red let's not let's not sort of beat around the bush 
bearing in mind um, got lots of greens there so a red always and it's just, just purely light red and that just strokes in like that it's a lovely dawn of window there not being too fussy with this but it needs to be held pretty well there is actually a window in the roof there um, I might as well put that in because that's quite an important feature I think and then the roof comes down very low there and finishes about that sort of area okay and there is another roof that comes in there that's an additional roof and not sure how far that comes down probably down to there there we go and that runs behind the tree really uh, finishes about there I think so that's basically it that will be in shadow once we get the sunlight um, in okay and then the thatch so you notice how I picked that lovely red color up for the red tile roof area um, now I'm going to pick up the nice thatch color my favorite mix for thatch burnt umber raw sienna those two can give you a new thatch, an aged thatch, and if you really want an age, you add more grey. If you want, want it more grey, add a little bit of ultramarine to that, and all of a sudden, you get a nice sort of grey, mellow sort of uh, feel to the um, to the uh, thatching, really. And obviously on the gable end, we've got quite a quite a thickness of thatch. Thatching is quite a thick area, and it's got quite rounded edges. So that's the thatching, the thickness of the roof there. There we go. So that's nice thatch colour. That um, I always use that sort of colour. Um, the ridge tom, the ridge of the roof may have been slightly different in colour um, but in general um, notice where I've left just, left just a bead of white paper between that and that um, just helps I think and this just helps to separate the two you know I could have gone a little bit lighter or a little bit darker um, but um, I think that's fine I think that uh, seems to work quite well and the rendering um, well, I will ask cream whether it will be cream or not not really sure and cream sort of make it a warm cream so I'm using burnt umber very weak with a little light red a little little yellow, little raw sienna. Uh, it's going to be very, very weak because it's really sunlit. And so, yeah, I think that probably is sufficient. It is very light. It's, it's almost white, but it's not white, if you know what I mean. Um, we do have, obviously, shadow to come on all of this. I would presume that's going to be rendered. Well, it's going to be rendered now, I'm afraid. And, of course, the front of that building there is going to be rendered too, and just there. We are. Shadow work really is the, is the key to these buildings. Um, and, with the point of a smaller brush, I'm going to put in the really dark area of the chimney. So it's um, quite dark, a uh, bit of Prussian, a bit of burnt umber. Add a little light red to that just to give it a bit of warmth. Um, and this is the shadow side. There, the overhang and the overhang of that there. The actual chimney itself now so I've depicted that chimney purely with the shadow work, um, not any other uh, 
colour and I'm going to use light red with a touch of crimson or lizarin painting down the left hand side of that chimney leaving the right hand side with the sunlight on there we are I think you should be able to see that um, then when it dries I'll put just a tint on the main chimney itself um, windows always a nice uh, sort of area um, you may think they reflect the um, the uh, sky but quite often cottages they don't because they're quite dark inside generally um, so I use burnt umber ultramarine and we've got one two three four five six so we've got one two three four five six and just I'm not painting the M in, in any major detail just enough to suggest or oh, there's a window there which is a uh, more or less a window in the roof really good well it's coming along quite um, quite nicely I'll allow that to dry okay well what I've done I've damped the right side with a damp brush and mixed up a fairly dark color and put on the left side and I've done that all the way through so I've got a soft edge running from light to dark because the dark side is on the left side so um, that um, seems to be working quite well now I'm going to put in some shadow work onto the I'm going to allow the lavender to dry now I'm going to put in the um, shadow work on the building and that will be well we've used we'll use alizarin okay because we've used that before obviously and um, but I'm going to use light red as well so it's cobalt alizarin with light red but it's mainly cobalt there we are a nice sort of unusual sort of shadow I don't like greys in shadows I like a little don't want to be too dark you can have I, I have been guilty in the past of making my shadows too dark um, well of my own assumption everybody else seems to think they're okay but uh, I've never been happy with them um, well not, not when that was the case um, okay right we do have a shadow I just got to watch that because it's ran over onto the roof so let's just lift that off before that soaks in right let's remove a bit of that so I've got a sharper edge and that is where the roof on the right casts a shadow on the roof on the left there you can see that quite clearly and what I'm going to do can't I didn't say it on the day but I know it would be the case that once the sun if it, the sun was just a little bit more of an acute angle it would cast a little bit across there and that's why the way I'm casting it hope that that sort of looks right there we are so that's that nice bit of sunlight just casting onto the roof there like that uh, should use a brush that points really but then again nice to get rounded edges okay good and we then have for obvious reasons a shadow from that window or that dormer roof like that so that's sh that's shows up that uh, nice area of red tiled roof let's bring that up to a taper that's good now we have a shadow on the overhang there of the roof of the cottage 
um, the, the dormer window overhangs slightly and then of course we have a lovely shadow which will cast from there to there and then from there to there nice deep shadow then we have another shadow from the overhang and this will be quite quite wide because these these roofs are quite wide these um, thatch roof areas and of course this will be quite wide too at that sort of angle there pretty good that's pretty good I think I think we can safely say that that's gonna work just lift off a little bit there's quite a lot on the brush there so just lift that away a tad I don't want that to get run back too much although if it does it does we don't want to start playing with um, with colors oh and while I'm at it there is an overhang of an area there now that's interesting whatever that does well it overhangs anyway there we go and that creates that illusion of sunlight on that thatch cottage good okay we'll allow that to dry okay well there's not too much more to do now it's a matter of putting in the detail on the lavender really and uh, it's quite simply cobble blue with or lizarin, only a quite a dense mix and you don't want too much paint on the brush so you want quite a dense mix plenty of color what a dense mix is plenty of color no or not too much water and what you do obviously you've got spikes of of lavender that come up into the field and to start with they're quite large affairs you know and they they do come out into the light side so but also you see them in the dark side as well probably denser in the dark area and of course they go over onto the um the grass and you gently tease those in quite bold in the foreground you have to work up sort of like a technique um, which I haven't quite got yet but I'm working on it oh there you go so that will give you that sense of of those um, lavender heads really um, Once the brush shapes right and the, the paint goes, too much paint goes from the brush, I suppose they're not so much dots as they're a bit more sort of spikes really. There we go. Let's see if I can get those a little nearer. There you go. Impression, you know. That's what I say if they don't look like it. It's just an impression. That's the way I normally get over most of my problems. Um, and of course, as we go away into the distance, we have to watch when you're working in the studio. When you're working outside, you're really doing it fast. But as you're working in the studio, you can tend to put too, many, too much of this business in. And consequently, um, you, uh, you tend to overdo it a little bit. And as you go away into the distance, you gradually lose them because the detail goes. And that is um, really what uh, what this is all about. Now we're putting in a lot of darker area on the left hand side. Okay. To show up the right hand side being having a little bit more sun. But other than that, um, that's all we need to do. 
So that's that one. Now I'm going to do this one. There. Whoops. There we are. Use the point of the brush to do this sort of work. And don't put it in a don't put them in a row. They need to be in clusters. You know, once they're in rows, then uh, they never look quite right. Um, and of course, they go up in the centre, out to the right, and out to the left. So if you can sort of manage to do them in that way. This camera here is causing me a little bit of a problem, but there you go. There we are, the lovely flower heads of the lavender. Really is a brilliant um, subject to paint. Okay, well, I'm gonna carry on with that technique and we'll come back to the final stage. Okay, well that's basically um, the lavender field in. All I've done is just dotted away and tried to get an impression of the lavender heads, the darker lavender heads. Um, but um, eventually um, my um, trip to the last time yesterday to Finching Field Camping, where this lovely field is, um, I did actually um, collect material for an article I'm writing for Leisure Painter. Probably won't be out until next year, um, 2021, um, but um, uh, that will have demonstration techniques and everything in that. Good. Okay, but that's pretty basic. Of You know, it's pretty basic stuff. If you're not used to painting lavenders in this way, then... Um, by all means, practice on a spare piece of watercolour paper before you actually um, um, paint onto your main subject. Good. Now I'm going to paint in a little shadow work. Now, you have to be very, very careful with this. To start off, we do have um, shadow on the grass. Okay. For obvious reasons, um, we would have shadow slightly on the left-hand side of these clumps. So what we do for that is we have to show that with some rather uneven, um, it's like a bluey-green shadow. I'm not going to go too dark with this. And of course the shadow tapers. It gets um, it'll be quite dark against the the, the um, heads. But of course they're in clumps, so we want to show quite an uneven top to that. Although it doesn't show too uneven. And as you go away, it just gradually gets smaller and smaller. So that really a bit more yellow in that. There we go. Required. Let's just put that in. A little darker than that just so as we can see it brilliant now that probably will be virtually all dark because that is on the very shadow side and there we go try not to show any light here not too many light areas and of course you're then going to have a sweep of this shadow across here from those some um, clumps there for start they're going to be I'm making them a little wider than they were on the day purely um, because um, if you don't then they look a bit dark and you can't quite get the um, the feel of them really the feel of the shadows there you go and then gradually they taper as they go up. There will always be shadow but it will be smaller 
and less um, tense really and of course then you come to that one you wouldn't see quite as much of that because most of that is tucked under the back and you probably wouldn't see any there at all um, but of course you'd leave some little touches on there because that's where the sunlit areas are so it's all about where you feel you would see these shadows um, and not a bad idea particularly in the distance just to soften the outside edge of those see the way I'm just pulling that shadow through and softening always a good thing to do on the outside edge just soften some of those shadows gives a lovely sort of there again a mystical feel to the whole thing so I'm more or less just lifting it off really uh, and just sort of teasing the um, the paint out to the outer edges good now finally I'm um, going to flick in a, a little green um, into the um, little soft green oh cadmium lemon sorry cadmium yellow with cobalt blue gives a quite a soft sort of green and these are the stems really um, you no need to put these in but I just thought in the foreground it does help just if some of these are just drawn in just to give because they are there you know and um, um, it's going to watch this a bit heavy take that off that's it um, and a delicate touch don't seem to quite have that delicate touch today but there you go it's another heavy one just lose that so it's just a few of these sort of the very thin green areas really you know I mean they they are there um, possibly uh, don't want, certainly don't want too many of them a few more on the outside edge of this because you'd see them you see um, not too many coming up there and of course they quite narrow quite thin affairs but I suppose if they come up a little thicker actually I'm going to be a bit bolder with them just to try and get that additional um, sort of feel of the way these greens just stand up and of course you wouldn't see too many as you go away into the distance again you know just one or two little areas of green um, these just come out a bit like that this side they stand up You know, um, it all helps, I think, to give that um, just a bit of additional um, detail, perhaps, to them. I'm going to put a few in this side. I won't put any more in once I've done these. Because it's, you know, something that really, a bit more water with that, um, is not going to add may see a few here um, coming out and of course they ride back down and like that you know it, just a, a suggestion you know I like to do an impressionist painting not a detailed painting as you can probably see so consequently um, you know detail tends to get forgotten and we just try and give an impression of lavenders without the detail and I'm just hinting at a bit of green in amongst that uh, that area because there is green you know um, and uh, a little bit of darker green on the inside here that's a good idea um, let's just watch we don't get too fussy with this but a little darker green there as it you know it's on the undersides 
not a great deal there you probably wouldn't see it anywhere else just a little bit there perhaps good and finally it really is um, a matter of do we need shadows well I'm coming to that in the end uh, it wasn't uh, um, down to put too many shadows in um, but a little bit of shadow work in the distance and these are going to be quite blue cobalt blue a little bit of uh, olizarin but not a great deal now the shadows may get a little bit of shadow work coming across there across there and and on the un on the right hand on the lower side of that um, hedge area there just to help you know take away the, um, the sense of um, uh, it's a little bit of lower shadow work there a bit of lower shadow work there just on the lower part of those trees um, just all helps to give atmosphere to the whole thing which as a landscape artist that's what we try to do um, and as I've said many times not always successfully but um, you only see the benefit of this when it completely dries you don't see it um, in the early stage and just a little bit along that edge there there we go let's just put a little bit of sort of something going on along that top edge there like that a uh, lovely bit of depth there, I like that. The next thing we need to do is to take the tape off round the outside. Okay, well do we need to do anything to finish this one off? Well, very little I think. Um, maybe I'm going to pick up uh, some very dry paint from the greeny brown side and just flick across this foreground because it looks a little smooth you know and, I, and it's always nice just to have a little bit of texture running across these uh, these areas like you would a track really you know it's what what is it well it's it's can't really tell you what it is but it's um always something that I've seen artists do and I thought well why and then when they're finished I think well it seems to actually work so I suppose the art is that if it works do it you know um, so there you go that is now put in like that and of course while I've got this I want to just show the, the um, nice bit of lining on the um, there just to give a sense of wouldn't have any light under there so I've got rid of that it wouldn't have any light under there so I've got rid of that um, let's get rid of a little bit up there I mean these little glimmers of light I'm um, really getting a bit of finicky now um, so the time to finish is to sign it but just before I do that there was a couple of kites flying in the sky they tell me they've been there for some time so I decided that we ought to put them in like brown kites I think so where do we want them well not a bad idea to have them coming in from the right I suppose in that um, sort of sunlit area I don't know um, anyway that's one there you can always tell a kite by the tail there you go nice thick there we go it's a lovely kite and there is another one there in the distance just floating around lovely pair of kites in the distance there 
and then finally it's signing up time I'm going to sign it here where it can be seen a little bit high up just in case I sign it a little darker than that um, just in case we um, we frame it or mount it as it were a little closer to the work that depends when I come to look at it how I need to frame it but that is now finished okay well that's the finished painting as you can see I've um, tried to get uh, the feel of the day that I saw yesterday in the um, field um, finching field camping site um, and uh, I think I've achieved quite a, a lovely effect and I've picked up the lovely old cottage too that um, is quite important um, I hope you've enjoyed that video um, there will be an article probably next year now um, on how to paint a lavender field in the Leisure Painter magazine um, this is from the um, taken from a view on finching field camping site um, anyone interested in camping um, in the North Essex countryside lovely place then um, please search finching field camping um, on your computer and uh, they've got a lovely facility there brilliant um, camping site well if you enjoyed that please uh, stay tuned to my youtube channel but in the meantime get those brushes out and see if you can get yourself a field like this down onto your watercolor paper bye for now